Hey, it's Toby from AbletonDrama.com and I want to show you in this video my Max for Life pack, the Automate Control Pack number two, which is all about the stuff you get in the top bar header in Ableton Live, stopping the transport, um, switching on recording for the arrangement and um, more stuff here. Plus, and which is really exciting, I think so, is how to automatic re how to do some automatic re-enable automation things. So let's go through the devices step by step. There are chapters in the video description as well. So you can jump if you're not interested in one or the other part, you can just jump. So those are Max for Life devices. You will need Max for Life for that, which is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live as standard. So you can always get the 90 days free trial of Ableton Live to check them out if you don't own Ableton Live Suite or Max for Life yet. Cool. Okay, so let's have a look on the first one here, which is the automate follow song. So um, follow song is a feature in Ableton Live, which you can turn on here. So this means um, the view of the arrangement will always follow your playhead. Yeah, so this is great. But as soon as you might move out something here it stops working and now the transport is still running but um it's not following anymore so you want you need to reactivate this here by clicking on it and now it jumps here to the position which is currently playing so you can automate this via a midi clip so you need to set up a midi clip you need to add a note so let's put in a different note here and then you need to sync this note pitch value you just put in. So E minus two in this particular case, you need to um, map this to the first device here. Let's fold all the other devices so we can focus on one by one. Zip, zip. Okay, and maybe let's switch them off as well. Okay, cool. So we have the automate follow song device here and it needs to be triggered via a MIDI note. So the MIDI note I put in here is the E minus two. So I could now match this and put this in here via my keyboard or um, just move with the arrows up and down to get the right value. Or I could just press S for sync here. And now bomb, it's automatically detecting the MIDI note, which should trigger the um, follow song here. So um, let's create the use case that we have this one running and the um, playhead is following and now it stopped following but as soon as it gets to the point where we have the clip, bomb, it jumps back to follow automatically again. So if you have a longer Ableton Live set and maybe you have a few songs which are bigger or smaller and you, when you're performing live you are um, zooming in zooming out to navigate you could set this at the beginning of every song or um at in some parts or you could even have quite a lot of those because it's just a midi note it doesn't uh takes up a lot <laughs> cpu and nearly to nothing so this way you can always make sure that the um even if you zoom in or zoom out and if you leave the playhead while it's playing that it's back on track and will show you the arrangement. Okay, let's go to the next device, which is the automatic re-enabling. So there are two devices here of that, which is um, once is you switch it automatically on and off. Let's start with this one first. So um, re-enable automation is something so um, if you have an automation, so for example, we create a new track here and we have something on here, maybe this track turn on and off um, activator here. So um, when the transport is running, let's get rid of those MIDI clips here. So you can see it's now turned on and it will turn off on this automation here again. Boom. So I set this automation here. So now if I touch this um, track activator button. If I turn it on, um, you can see boom, that now the automation is grayed out, which means the automation is still there, but it's deactivated now because I've overwritten it with a manual action I just did. So this can happen quite a lot in some parts. And um, you want this 
to be turned on again automatically so what we need to do is we need to activate this button here so usually you can click on here but if you're playing you don't want to click on something you just want to make sure that this is re-enabled again maybe you have a part in a set where you have an automation but sometimes live you decide to turn a track on and off uh, manually and then you have disabled all this automation for the whole Ableton live set so if you have a longer set and maybe in the beginning uh, on the song here you have automations you disabled all the automations for the whole parameter uh, for the whole live set for this parameter so you can do this automatically now this re-enabling which would be this device here and you get um, a midi note here as well you need to set up a midi clip so for example if i add a midi clip here command shift m and i put in a midi note here and i need to make sure to map this midi pitch number to my device so if i turn on the midi pitch here and press s so it's now waiting for a midi pitch to come in and now it's detected the g3 midi note here and now this clip here with this midi note will always re-enable my automation so if i do this now i click here the MIDI was, uh, the automation was disabled and it's now automatically re-enabled by this button here. So once more, I have this track automation, which is turning this track on. If I now click on this, the automation is grayed out. It is disabled and I want to re-enable this automation. So if I now keep playing and up to this point here where the MIDI note bomb is automatically re-enabling the automation here so there is one more device for the automatic re-enable automatic re-enabling automation it's a funny word okay so um this one is actually doing this all automatically so it's called automatic re-enable automation okay so if this one is turned on the re-enabling will happen automatically instantly so for example if i have this running here and if i now press the clip the track activator it disables the automation but then it gets automatic re-enabled so um, this way i can make sure that if i by accident touch a parameter which is mapped to a midi controller and i'm disabling automations here that this is being set back so this is like for uh, one button things if if you have a fader or something which spits out quite a lot of parameter changes this won't work 100 percent. this won't work safe so if you have this uh use case where you have a fader you want to use that and then at some point you want this to be re-enabled you use the first device here and set a point where you want this to be re-enabled via midi clip via midi note if you want <coughs> always automatic um, stuff being re-enabled and this is just for short messages buttons uh, one press not for not for not wheel um, where you send a lot of messages this will break um, the automatic re-enable automation here but you can use this one just to make sure um, if you sometimes use something by accident, this will switch that back. Okay, we have a few more devices here which are very similar um, to use and they control um, the transport stop, the arrangement record, the session record and the automation arm plus the MIDI overdub. So all those buttons here um, can be automated via those devices here so the transport stop is quite a nice device it needs a midi note as well so if we do this here for example we put in a midi clip we set put in a midi note we need to now map this midi note to sorry to this um, stop here so we now got an f sharp three and as soon as we get here bomb 
the transport will stop automatically so you can see i'm not touching anything it will stop so this could be useful for like um if you have a lot of songs and you want to stop the transport automatically in some place you can use that one if you're interested in stuff like this please check out my stop transport and jump to the next locator and that could make sense for you as well um yeah I will link that in the video description as well. So the last four devices here are very similar. They don't need a MIDI note. You can just set automations via the automations here. So if you have um, this one selected and the automation view obviously needs to be turned on. Let's get rid of this track here because we don't need this. So you can see now that this one is actually, oh, if it's turned on, it should be turned on. And I was using the wrong automation here, so it needs to be turned on. Let's delete this one. And I want this button here to actually um, using this. So if you, for example, uh, play some stuff in your arrangement and at some point you want to have things recorded, now things would be recorded. So if we have um, a different MIDI track here, it will illustrate this. So you might be playing a song and some stuff and at some place you wanted to record something and you can automate this here and you can turn the automation off as well. So if you want the recording to stop but keep on playing, you can do this via the automate arrangement record. Okay, so the automate session record can be used here as well if that's something, if you're using the um, session recording stuff here and the automation arming for um, the session here as well. Automate MIDI overdub is a great function and you want to auto, you can automate this in um, the arrangement here as well. Just to let you know, obviously all the, automations can be set in uh, session view here as well if you select the devices um, so if you want to start the arrangement record via something in um, session view you need to set up a midi dummy clip so just click on an empty clip slot you now have a midi clip and inside this midi clip you have the envelope section here where you can select the different devices and set automations on this uh, envelope automation set here. So if I want to turn um, onto automate arrangement record on and off, I can do this in here as well. So now this clip here, you can see it up here. This clip here is actually uh, controlling the arrangement recording button here. Okay. Just follow the link in the video description. It's one pack of three packs for um, automating stuff in Ableton Live. Um, there might be some use cases, some special use cases you're looking for. Um, and there are about uh, 25 devices split up in those three packs. So you can have a look if there is something in there for you. I will link all of those different packs in the video description. Check them out. Bye bye.